Sauvignon Blanc thrives in Sassoon Valley. When I drink other, you know, Sauv Blancs, I'm always wishing for that Sassoon Valley punch of bold aromatic. Really good, uh, like citrus characters, and then maybe some, you know, mostly lemongrass stuff. And our style is definitely more on the tropical side, um, you know, getting into the more kind of riper California style. What we've been so proud about with our Sauvignon Blanc is it consistency year after year after year? Good afternoon, guys. This is uh, folks from down in Sassoon Valley. Um, my name is Roger King, um, King Andrews Vineyards. And I got a merry band of winemakers from uh, inside of Sassoon Valley that want to share some information, insights, and knowledge about what happens in our valley with grapes and how it gets into wine and what it might taste like with you. Um, so I want to introduce Bob. Safira Pong Satsui from Sunset Cellars, Brian Babcock from Sassoon Creek, Gina Richmond from Mangles, Jenny Wagner from Wagner Family of Fine Wines, Ron Lanza of Wooden Valley Winery, and Lisa Howard to Linus Winery. These are our uh, Mary Band of winemakers that are going to take you through what happens in Sassoon Valley. So I'm going to throw it to Brian right now. Yeah, off you go. Hey guys, thanks for uh, joining the meeting here. We've got, um, I kind of wanted to, to talk about uh, kind of this year, the 20 vintages and, and mostly Sauvignon Blanc and Petit Syrah, but uh, since we can't get together and taste wines directly or safely with each other, uh, we'll, we'll do it on Zoom meeting and share, share everything with everybody. But uh, I just wanted to find out how everybody kind of felt about their 20 vintage of Sauvignon Blanc. So uh, that's kind of what this is about, or you know, or what you think about Sub Blanc in general. So for me, from here, and I'm kind of in the the central part of Sixteen Valley, maybe the central southern part on the uh, the west side. But uh, what I get from it typically is is uh, really good, uh, like citrus characters, and then maybe some you know mostly lemongrass stuff, but then some also some some nice uh, you know I don't want to say herbaceous, but uh, slightly green characters but not offensively green so I'm, I'm happy with it the weight's really good i don't know what are you guys' thoughts i'm always impressed with the susan valley saw blancs um mostly uh their aromatics um when i drink other you know saw blancs i'm always wishing for that susan valley punch of bold aromatics um just a lot of good citrus stone fruit um just a lot more bold i think possibly because of the warmer days but still having that cool night to preserve the acidity. Um, I feel like 2020 wasn't, you know, stayed true to that. Um, there was uh, really needed to be some close eye on when we picked due to the heat wave. Um, but that, uh, you know, 2020 otherwise, it was nice because, you know, by the time the bricks were up, the acid was still there because it happened so late in the year. But I'm very happy. I feel like the there's a lot of body in our Sauv Blancs in our valley. Um, they're they're very, I would just call them a, like a more powerful Sauv Blanc compared to some other areas. I don't know, Gina, do you have that same experience with where you're growing? Because where I buy our Sauv Blanc, it is basically the heart of the valley, right in the middle of Sussum Valley. You know, very similar. Um, I love the aromatics from Sussum Valley. Um, we're growing Sauv Blanc uh, close to where Brian is growing uh, Sauvignon Blanc as well. Um, we have, our blend is 50, 50. So a Sauvignon Blanc clone and then a Sauvignon Mousquet clone. Um, and so I'm, I do pick them at the same time, but I'm sort of, I'm making those decisions based on the Mousquet clone as I start to see, taste and smell those more Muscat characters of that clone. I know I've hit at my goal for our style and our style is definitely more on the tropical side. Um, you know, getting into the more kind of riper California style and staying away from the grassier, greener styles of like a New Zealand. I do the same thing. Like, <laughs> muscat or muscat clone is like 50 50 for us, too. Mm -hmm. oh, awesome. Yeah. And your vineyard is literally next door, like across yeah. the road. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and since it's pretty flat, there's not a whole lot of variation. Uh, variations. But they just put a road in like 50 years ago, and that was about right. the difference. Our Sauvignon Blanc is um, more a little north of you guys, and is even though it's fairly fairly close as a crow flies, it's not very far, but it can be different. And 
Susan Valley has that that difference as you go each half mile up the road, up Susan Valley Road or up the valley, it, it does change. And sometimes you hit these dramatic change spots. So I do think that I know uh, Lisa, uh, where Salinas and where Lisa gets theirs and where, where we get ours, very similar spot. And um, I think it's a little different style um, as far as the flavor profile, but what we found is when you, like most, probably everybody experienced this, if we pick it a little higher bricks, 23, 23 and a half, usually don't want to go over 24, try to keep the alcohol down, but we get this, the nice grapefruit citrus style as well. And um, what we've been so proud about with our Sauvignon Blanc is that consistency year after year after year, it almost is the same once in a while, One's a little better or might last a little longer, but I think it's just the consistency is just, I'm trying our 2020, I have to say maybe the second time I've tried it. <laughs> so since it's been cleaned up and it is clean, ready to bottle. And it's, I'm excited. And obviously it's the same <laughs> year after year after year. So um, we like to get a bottle and get it out to the, to the consumer, which is kind of our style, but um, consistency, is what I think that um, we've been able to achieve. You know, if Susan Valley is bringing that, that's fantastic, but definitely we have consistency. Let's talk to Jenny for a minute, because like you get it, like you buy from a couple different spots over the valley, right? Yeah, I do. So the past couple of years I've been buying um, Sauvignon Blanc from a couple of different sites um, in the valley. One of which is I've been fortunate to buy from Brian uh, from your property. Um, beginning with 19 and then uh, was able to get more tonnage um, this past year in 20. And then the other site is just a few miles north, so past uh, Wooden Valley, past where Ron is, um, very northernmost part of the valley. And as Ron was saying, just between those two sites, not far apart, there are differences, um, which I love. I, just a, a few few miles there's a few degree differences I've noticed. Um, they're both valley floor, kind of more silty clay-like soils, um, but Sauvignon Blanc thrives in Sassoon Valley and that's what I really love about it. And everyone's kind of hit, hit on their different styles of Sauvignon Blanc. And I, I also love that about Sassoon Sauvignon Blanc is that, you know, you really can, it, it ripens early. You can pick early, um, you can let it hang a couple weeks longer to achieve more of that weighty, fruity um, style versus the more kind of lean, a little bit of herbaceous quality. Um, so I, I've had fun sourcing from two different locations and picking kind of two different styles of, of grapes to make a, a blend of, of a Sauvignon Blanc. Um, it's a little bit leaner, but I one thing I admire about Ron's Sauvignon Blanc especially, I love that you're already bottle ready for 2020. Yeah. I, I just love that. I taste it. It's always the first uh, the first wine of a vintage that I ever try. So looking forward to that. <laughs> I'd like to see more producers of Sauvignon Blanc in the Valley to get another, to get a wider spectrum. We all do it and that's great, but I'd like to even see some more because I, I personally think based on our consistency that we've been able to do, I think it has a really good future here and I'd love to see some more out there. Um, and I, every time no matter who's making it out of all of this. Uh, and I try the Sauvignon Blancs. I'm very proud of what we have here. And I feel that it's as good as anywhere you can you can get it. And I'd love to see it more. I'd love to see more wineries, wineries doing uh, a Sauvignon Blanc from Susan Valley. And some more acres of it would be fantastic. All right, that pretty well wraps up our little Sauvignon Blanc uh, review. That's about it for our little band of thieves down here in Sassoon Valley. Uh, I really want to thank the six winemakers that uh, joined us to give you a little bit of insight on a couple key grapes down here. So Blanc definitely being one of the flagships on the white side in Sassoon Valley. So uh, we wish we could see you, uh, but uh, this is the best we're going to do for this year. More information on us can easily be found at SBBGA. Dot com. That's our grower website from down here in Sassoon. Uh, it's got a lot of definitions on the grapes that we grow and how else other things happen here. And enjoy the rest of your virtual Unified Wine Symposium for 2021. Good job, Raj. Both years.
Cheers. Thank you guys. Thank you guys.